next one, uh, next young explorer is going to present is um, Nancy Lee. Um, she um, is currently a PhD candidate in the geography department here, um, who's done research um, focused on glacial geomorphology and climate change. Uh, she came to this country in 2008 for a master's degree in geography, and before that she had actually never um, been out of, uh, outside of mainland China. She says that coming here has been a life-changing decision and she never regrets it, and she seems to be uh, completely at home here in Knoxville. So please welcome Nancy Lee. Thank you for the inter introduction. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Yang Li, and I go by Nancy. I'm a PhD student from Geography Department, University of Tennessee. So I, I received the Young Explorers grant in early 2012, and my study was about the Little Ice Age glaciers uh, in China. So, uh, as I see this, uh, as a fact, of this great honor, I would say excitement starts from here. Um, Please allow me to introduce my own geography first. I was born in Wulongqi, uh, the capital city of the most northwestern uh, province in China. And I grew up there for 18 years. And then after that, um, I went to Beijing for four-year college at Beijing Normal University. Uh, during the last two years of my college, college, I decided to apply abroad for graduate study in the US. Uh, and luckily enough, I made it here, the Uni University of Tennessee. Uh, I came here first for my master's degree, as Rebecca said, um, studying tree rings. And then after that, I just decided to continue pursue uh, to continue pursuing a PhD degree with focuses on glacial geomorphology and past climate change. Now it's already been six years. How time flies! Um, and I expect to graduate next spring. So when I was little, I traveled a lot uh, by train from the northwestern province to the south southeast coast. That, that is from my hometown to my father's hometown. It was these journeys that made me first to see places like the Gobi Desert, like the Yellow River and Great Wall. I remember, I remember holding my head, staring out of the window, and wondering how, how the lands, landscape was shaped and what causes the changes. Uh, my curiosity and love in geography never waned since then. During the beginning of my PhD program, I got a chance to attend the grant writing workshop organized by the Office of Research. Um, and also, our department has a class called Grant Proposal Writing offered by Professor Sally Horn. Um, these two are the main sources I learned, where I learned how, how, how to write grant proposal. And searching out an appropriate grant and fellowship needs a lot of work. I got to know this YEG information from Dr. Harden. Um, and then once I knew this is a grant I really wanted to apply, uh, I counted the timing of the application and goes uh, field work. So, um, but you guys, you guys are so lucky to be here and listening to this wonderful workshop, workshop right here, right now. So pay attention to whatever, to, to what they say. Um, yeah, and I think here, from my perspective, um, these three notes I would pass to you as a take home notes. <coughs> as you will hear later from the NAGEO officers, there are two main parts in the application. Here's a screenshot to show you how many files I created during the writing process. <laughs> I'm not showing this to scare you, but just to show that it can take some time and efforts to polish your application because there's no substitute for hard work, said by Thomas Edison. I feel so honored to be on the NetGeo webpage. This picture shows me standing right in front of Glacier holding a GPS not posing victory. <laughs> so, <laughs> holding the GPS, trying to get good signal. Uh, this site is above 11,000 feet um, high in the elevation. Um, so my proposed study was about the glacial history during the Little Ice Age in Chinese Tianshan. Since not everyone is glaciologist, so let me break down for you. 
I use cosmogenic nuclide dating to find out for how long the rocks have been exposed to cosmic rays, so I can determine when the glacial advances occurred. Um, glaciers mean a lot to this dry area. Um, by knowing the glacial history, we can, we can know the climate history and to permanent. This map shows where my study sites are in Chinese Tianshan. During this two-week field trip, my advisor, Dr. Philip Li, and two field assistants helped me collect over 100 rock samples. That was a really productive field trip, and none of this would be possible without Y G grant money and my advisor's great help, both during the application process and in the field. You know, it usually is, uh, is professor taking students out to the field, but this time I use this money to, brought my, to bring my, my boss to the field. Uh, it feels so cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> so a bonus click home note, always consult your advisor. Now I already finished all my lab work for the samples and the rock ages are being calculated. Besides, uh, I already published a paper from this research. I'm working on more manuscript, and hopefully once I'm done, they will become part of my dissertation. Here are some, well, okay, here's a picture of my advisor <laughs> in the field. <laughs> Here are some pictures at the sampling locations. We need to use chisel and hammer to knock off about two pounds rock surface. Harder ones might take hours. Um, sometimes we need to hike a long distance to reach the glacier front. For example, the glacier showing this picture, we had a hike about 12 miles in the valley. I had never been so close to glaciers. I feel very, I feel very shocked when you see how, how huge glaciers are and how dusty they are. And of course, unexpected circumstances are always explorers' favorites. We met bad weather that changed our plan. We got stuck in a town because the road was flooded and no gas can be transported into the town. town. And we almost got lost in the darkness after that long day hiking. This region of China is also characterized, character, characterized with its unique cultures. Ethnic groups like Uyghur, Mongolians, Kazakhs uh, are the local people living a nomadic life there. During the field trip, we had a lot of interaction with them. And in accordance with those astonishing uh, National Geographic photographs, I tried my best to capture the beautiful views. This one shows the glacial, glacial landscape under beautiful sky. And this one shows flower sea with mountainous glaciers in the background. And this one gives you an idea how the no Mongolian nomadic life was like, that all the years, horses. And this one is beautiful young swallower view of me posing as fashion. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Just want to tell you, don't forget to photograph yourself in the field. That's important because that's imp important to have you in the story. So to conclude my YEG experience, I feel more than grateful because it has brought me much more than what I expected. First, confidence. Like everybody else, I question myself. But this YEG is definitely a positive that can and did bring me more positives. And second, uh, following up this YEG grant, I have successfully applied another grant from National Science Foundation. It's called Doctoral Dissertation Research Improvement Grant. With that, I can finish all my sample measurements. So third, I see this YEG uh, as a jump, jump start for my academic, academic career. No matter whether I stay in academia or I find other jobs, this will play a role in my future. So in a word, I want to say to you, be a young explorer. It's worth trying. Um, here are the people I want to thank. And again, it's a great honor to be here. Thank you so much. <laughs>